standing at the headwaters of a river here in Central America. There are hundreds of rivers like this all over the world. This water will travel almost 300 kilometers as it passes through towns, factories, farms, and several small cities before it reaches the Atlantic Ocean. Thousands of years ago, this river was simply a water course transporting inland rainfall to the sea, picking up a minimal amount of soil and minerals along the way. But now, since human settlement in the area, this river carries so much more sewage and wastewater, litter, fertilizer, and a variety of other pollutants that not only affect the health of this river, but ultimately the health of the ocean and us. When this river passes through an agricultural area, it picks up excess fertilizer that's been applied to these crops and washed away by the rain. Much of the runoff ends up in the ocean where it continues to act like fertilizer, stimulating algae growth. These harmful algal blooms, in turn, deplete the surrounding waters of oxygen, creating dead zones where entire marine ecosystems can die off. As the river passes through a developed area like this, it picks up wastewater and trash. Nearly all human activity creates wastewater, like sewage, storm runoff, discharge from power plants and factories, and more. If properly managed, wastewater can actually be an asset, but it also contains all those chemicals we put down our drains and toilets, including cosmetics and pharmaceuticals that can wreak havoc on the health of marine animals, disrupting their reproductive systems, causing birth defects, and more. And once those chemicals are in the food chain, they could ultimately affect our health. By the time the river's ended its long run to the ocean, it's picked up a toxic mix of chemicals and debris. One category of litter, plastics, is a particular problem. Every year, at least 8 million tons end up in the ocean, where it affects hundreds of different species through entanglement or ingestion. Once plastic gets into the waste stream, it breaks down into smaller pieces, which makes the problem worse. But it doesn't completely degrade, so unless we take immediate action, plastic is a problem that will continue to grow and affect future generations. One part of the ocean that's particularly sensitive to all this land-based pollution is coral reefs. Many marine species are born here, and much of the food web begins here. If we kill the reefs, people in many coastal communities will see their livelihoods disappear and find themselves more vulnerable to extreme weather and food insecurity. Improving ocean health might seem like an overwhelming task, but we can all do something. For starters, you can stop using single-use plastic items and dispose of medications properly. You can urge politicians to enact policies that help protect our water bodies, such as creating more marine protected areas, investing in better wastewater management, and improving practices in sectors such as agriculture. No matter how far inland we live, our choices have an impact on the ocean. In the end, every community is an ocean community.